Muslim. And he said, look, I don't have to prove that to you. In the house of prayer, we stand shoulder to shoulder. These are all the explanations we give. We stand shoulder to shoulder. No gaps left between one devotee and another. You know why? Because the Holy Prophet Muhammad, he said that when when you stand up for prayer, you must not leave gaps for the devil, shaitan, to get in between you and your brother. I says, I know. When we talk about the devil, it sounds very superstitious, backward. But I said, the shaitan that Muhammad sallallahu was talking about was not the guy we see in the art gallery. We have an art gallery. Beautiful paintings by great artists. Art gallery. I said, you see there, a beautiful woman with wings. A beautiful woman with wings, well proportioned. They give the perfect proportion, 36, 24, 36, old measurement, inches. 36, 24, 36. That's supposed to be the most perfect proportion to the Westerner. 36, 24, 36, well proportioned, with wings. And you see a devil in the picture. In the picture you can show everything. And this woman, this wing, angel, she's got a stick in her hand, wand, and she's pointing to hell, and you see hell in the distance. In the picture, you can show all that. And the devil is flying away. And this devil has got wings, he's got horns, he's got sharp ears, and he's got a tail with a barbed hook. I said, that devil, if you saw one, you'll run for dear life. Me too, me too. I run for dear life. Muhammad was not talking about that devil. He was talking about you, yourself. Your racial pride. Your arrogance. Your riches. I'm rich. He's poor. I'm white. He's black. That devil must not be allowed to come in between you and your brother. So we stand shoulder to shoulder. No gaps left for that shaitan. That shaitan. Not the other one with horns or with tail. But as instead of my brother, you, I have my sister, you standing shoulder to shoulder. And I say, Allahu Akbar. So Allah is the greatest. But my mind starts wondering whether you're not the greatest. <laughs> no, nice, comfortable feeling, cushy feeling. And in winter, you can feel that one degree difference. Yes. Physiologists, they say there is always one degree difference in temperature, every temperature between man and woman. And that one degree is perceptible. You can feel it. Or you're standing in front. Because we stand rows and rows behind each other. You are in the front row. And I say, Allahu Akbar. I see 36, 24, 36. <laughs> this is man, any man. Unless he's a lunatic, or there's something else wrong with him. This is how God made us. And I say, look, I don't have to prove this to you. I say, you know it. You Westerners, you know this weakness of man. And you're exploiting it to the hilt. To the limit. I says, you know, in Durban, in my city, there's a firm called Lucian Motors. They sell second-hand trucks. But on the trucks that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the truck. G Knots, they sell farm implements. And on the tractors that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the tractor. So I'm asking, what has a woman in the bikini got to do with a second-hand truck or with a tractor? Except the man will be enticed to read because she's being dangled before him. See, see what you're doing? I said, BMW. It's a motor car supposed to be a little better than the Mercedes Benz in my country. A little more expensive. I'm not in a market for it. But I said, you know, in the newspaper, a few days back, I saw an advert, BMW motor car. And I had to read it. You know why? Because in front of this motor car was a woman in the skimpiest of bikini, what they call the tanga, the G-string. Well-proportioned woman, almost naked. And she's standing with a lustful, enticing pose, as if she's calling you. And at the bottom is written, test drive her now. <laughs> and the her is underlined. Who? The woman of the car. She's barring the car. I said, what are you doing to your women folk? Hmm? The Holy Prophet Muhammad is said that they are your mothers, your sisters, your daughters. They are wives. They have to be respected, honored, and protected. They are not for sale. Tell you the impact that it has. One lady tells me before she's leaving, he said, why don't you come and tell this to my people? Tell them! They are being exploited. But my dear brothers and sisters, you see, 
there is so much, it's so easy, wallah. We here, I know you haven't got the opportunity that we have. You haven't got so many tourists. In Abu Dhabi, I don't know the tourists, where can they go? Masjid every corner. The masjids are empty. As our great poet Iqbal, he says, Masjid e marsiya ha hai ke namazi na rahe, yane wo sahib e awsaf e hijazi na rahe. The masjids are mourning places. They're crying that there are no people for making prayer. I said, fill up the masjids. You are not enough. You are very sparsely populated. You've got so many masjids. Convert the people. There are people here. Allah has sent them to your door. Why don't you give deen to them? Look, you were supposed to go out and look for them. Allah has sent them to your door. He's given you wealth, all of a sudden, given you wealth, so they come to you looking for jobs. The Korean is here, the Filipino is here, the Sri Lankan is here, the, the Hindu from India is here. Why don't you talk to him? Why don't you bring them to the masjid? Just let them sit down and see what we are doing. Explain to them the unseen God of the universe that we are worshipping. Allah will make us to account for it. They are working for you in the houses. Christian women. And your children are imbibing Christianity from them. Unwittingly. They are not deliberately trying to convert your children. But I heard a Saudi gentleman telling me, he says, you know, my child when he sat down, he was doing like this. I said, did you teach him? He said, no. Did your wife teach him? He said, no. He says, the nanny. Because she does. She's not teaching the child, but every time she's there. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So your child is also doing the same. Yes, one brother was telling me, he says he was talking about God, God. So he says, you know, the God is in the cupboard. <laughs> telling a, a little three or four year old child, he says, the God is in the cupboard. So what? He says, yes, daddy come. He takes the child, the girl, little girl takes, five year old girl takes the father to the cupboard and they found the statues inside. Yes, so now this is, the change them. No force, like Rahafiddin, no compulsion, don't threaten them. Don't say, if you don't become a Muslim, I'm going to kick you out. No, 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 no. Share with them. Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati. Invite all to the ways of thy Lord with wisdom. Wal mawazatil hasanati. And with beautiful preaching. Wajadil hum billati ahsan. And reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. And make use of your masjids, not only for salat and for funeral prayer, but for everything. With these words, I'm very, very grateful to the Ministry of uh, uh, Information for bringing me to your country. Actually, I had come here to thank the people for the help they had given me when I was going to debate that guy Swagat. You see, for the help that the people had given me. Without that, I would not have been projected into America. I was rocketed into America by you people. So I had come to say thank you. But more than that, instead of me saying thank you, in my honor, in the honor of Islam, they replayed the tapes in Arabic and in English from Abu Dhabi TV. So making life impossible for me. The love. You know, I delivered a lecture. I don't know when. Wednesday night, I can't remember now. What was that? I, Tuesday night. And I had to run for life from there. I had to come one o'clock in the morning, reach here. I don't want people to know where, where I am. <laughs> it's the love you have for me. I can't walk in the streets. Everybody want to pump my hand. Everybody want to kiss my hand. Now people want to kiss my forehead. <laughs> I'm in the sweat. They want to kiss the sweat. I said, look, please. <laughs> Do yourself some justice. So, you know, the thing is I can't match. Your love and feeling you have for me, I can't match it. So I have to find ways and means of leaving you and running away. Wallah. I have to run because I can't match it. May Allah bari ta'ala reward you for the love and feeling. It's the love and feeling you have for Islam that brings you to listen to me. Otherwise, what do you want to come and see this old man? What is there? But it's your love for deen that brings you to listen to me. So may Allah bari ta'ala bless you and strengthen you that you may carry on his message and use the masjid also as a place of da'wah. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.